we teach or we preach or we pray or we sing in the choir or we play certain types of instruments, God hears us because of his son, Jesus Christ. Because in him, he does not see you or me as a sinner, but the Bible declares that he sees us as his righteousness in Christ Jesus. So even though you may slip in sin, when God sees you in Christ, he sees you sinlessness. So that obtains mercy. That obtains his grace. Amen? Somebody ought to shout glory. So now the next part is, how do I partake of the Holy Communion? Before you partake, remember that the Holy Communion is not a ritual to be observed but a blessing to be received. Yes. Say that again. It is not a ritual to be observed, but it is a blessing to be received. Because when I receive the bread and receive the cup, it is a blessing because as it enters my body, I'm reminded what Jesus done. I'm reminded that he paid the price for my sins, and I, I need to help somebody right here. That's how you got off of crack cocaine. It wasn't the 12-step program. It was the deliverance and the healing of Christ when you acknowledge him as Lord of Lord and God of God and King of King, and you made him the Lord of your life. Won't he deliver you? Uh, it, it wasn't your strong willpower. And watch this. If it wasn't the strong willpower that you gave up the drinking and the women chasing. No, it was your knowledge of Christ that when he came into your life, he brought deliverance. He brought deliverance. You say, but wait a minute. Every now and then, I may fall into a sin. Baby, you need to understand what the Bible says is that a good man will fall seven times, but he'll get back. Jesus would not leave you in your mess. He will bring you up out of it because his great, and look, don't fool yourself. Whenever you slip into sin, Satan and his demonic spirits is there and he have every right according to the word of God, to kill you. Because the Bible says that the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is what? So when I take the bread and I take the cup, I have the gift of eternal life. So I'm blessed to receive it. Why? I should be dead. I ought to be dead. But it's because the gift of everlasting life. Uh, somebody ought to shout glory. It wasn't that I was slick. It wasn't that you were good at what you do. It's because you are blood covered in Christ that he forgave you. Uh, can you imagine the devil is right there to kill you? But then when God looks and he sees you in Christ and he sees the blood, look at somebody and say, you can't see it, but I'm blood covered. I'm blood bought. And Jesus have redeemed me. Glory to God. I'm sorry, y'all. I got excited there for a moment. Because I don't take my salvation for granted. See, I, I know uh, most of us is not all of us. We should have been dead. Some of us probably should be in prison. But it was by the grace of God. You know, not that he favored you more than others it's because you have tapped into the source to realize this is not just bread in a cup it is not a ritual see this is why it has no effect on people because most people take it as a ritual when it's not a ritual it's a blessing it is a blessing so because it is not a ritual there is no prescribed bread or special drink required in the Last Supper, Jesus used whatever he had at the table. Bread was commonly eaten at supper and whatever they were drinking. It just happened to be wine because that's what they did back in the day. They drunk wine and they always had unleavened bread. So he just took what he had and used it. See, because if he would have said, bake some bread, and then gather some wine, 
that would have been considered a ritual. But while I was sitting there, and holy means set apart, so they were set apart. Because he, the only thing he told them, he says, look, I want you to go into the street. And there you're going to see a man bearing a pitcher of water. And tell that man to show you the master of the house and tell him to prepare the upper room. Now watch this. When, when they were sitting there, he was communicating with them. You know, and it's in the scripture. Because as he was talking to them, he was telling them that he was going to betray, be betrayed. He was telling them that's why we got Holy Communion. It was set apart for him to communicate with them about the things that was going to happen in his future life. And then he said, but one of you that sit with me is going to betray me. Now they were talking. They was having a conversation. So they all sit there and they say, Lord, is it I? Ah, they did what Paul said. They began to examine themselves. Yeah. That means that somebody had some guilt. And then as soon as Judas dipped in with him, he said, he that dipped with me is the one. You are the son of prediction. Whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. And see, he knew that Judas was going to betray him. That's right. But I want you to understand the power of it. Now, I'm going to say this, and this is my closing part, and we're going to say it again. Because the question is, how do you take it? There, there is a significance in how you take the Holy Communion. If you're just grabbing the bread and eating it and drinking the cup and say, I've had communion today, then that's why you have not felt the effects of it. See, this is why I believe in the scriptures. And this is why whenever the doctors would say, okay, this is wrong. Here's the medication. I don't need it. Why? I'm healed. Why? Because I received the blessings of my healing through communion. So what do you say? When, you, when we first take the bread, we should say, thank you, Father, for the gift of your son. By the stripes that fell on his back, my body is healed from the crown of my head to the very sole of my feet. Every cell, every organ, every function of my body is healed, restored, renewed. In Jesus' name, I believe and I receive. Then we eat the bread. See, and then when we take the cup, Lord Jesus Thank you for your precious blood. Your sin-free, disease-free, poverty-free life is in your blood. And your shed blood has removed every sin from my life. Through your blood, I am forgiven of all my sins, past, present, and future, and made completely righteous. Today, I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteousness, which is preservation, healing, wholeness, provision. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me. Amen. Then you drink the cup. See, it's a significant way because it is a purpose behind it. And this is why a lot of people don't understand it is because they think they're just drinking a cup and eating some bread and say we had Holy Communion and go home. No, it is the significance. It is how you think about the thing that makes it become significant to you. See, just because we say Jesus is the Savior of the world, if that is the case, and it is true, then all the world is not going to be with Christ in God's kingdom. Why? It's because if they don't know the significance enough to accept him as their savior, then they don't know the effects. The only effects that they know is that they should be dead, but because of what he done for God so loved the world that he gave. So God didn't just give it for us when we were Christians. The Bible said while we were yet sinners, Christ what? Died for us. So while we were out there doing our thing over 2,000 years ago, God looked our way over into the future and saw every last one of us, and that's the purpose Jesus died. So now that we accept him as our Savior, come on, stand to your feet. Tell somebody, I am somebody. I'm blood bought. That's why Jesus said, you've been purchased with a price. And if you don't know your worth, do you know, can you imagine how much somebody love you when they give their life for you? Come on, brother deacons. When they give their life for you. You know, it's a strong thing when a man look and say, I don't have the money, 
but take my life instead. See, a life is the most powerful thing that can happen. Now what I'm going to ask you all to do, I'm going to ask you, we're going to do it the same way. Sister so Ram, you come right here, Lady Baines, you come right here. No, no, you can leave. What we're going to ask you to do is this, is that when you get your bread in your cup, do not take it. Just hold it in your hands and go back to your seat and wait for further instructions. If you would do that. Will you do that for me? If you would just hold on to it. And then we're going to give you further instructions from there. While you're standing, we're going to ask Brother...